video was sponsored. The frog tier list. Let's go. Sponsored by Curiosity Stream. Miss Formic Mix. I never watched that. I don't think. That was sick. Amphibians are one of the oldest factions in the game, having been added to the game in a late Devonian expansion. The marine meta at the time was hostile, to say the least. So it made sense that the devs would let smaller fish players spec into legs and lungs so they could finally join the arthropods on the terrestrial servers. You're just bashing his face on the fucking rock. Moderately viable in the meta this entire time <coughs> and survived multiple rounds of balance patches is impressive to say the least. And while the amphibian faction has several popular build styles, the most well known is the frog. The role frogs occupy in the it's current meta like... is an odd one. At low levels, they're easily some of the least powerful builds in the oh, entire okay. game. Only about half of I prefer like barbecuing over uh, baking they get to unlock the rest of the or like watching and eating honestly. But is that even worth it? How viable is the adult frog? There's some things that they're among the best at, and from a gameplay perspective, I think they offer a fun and unique playstyle. Damn boy, but with that said, the frog has a lot of glaring weaknesses holding it back from a higher tier spot in the meta. Still, there are some standout members that have their own unique perks and special abilities that make them more viable than your average frog in the current meta. So today, we'll be going over the tier list of the frogs. But first, let's discuss the basic archetype and what its main advantages and disadvantages are. Taking a quick look at the frog stats, we can pretty easily see that there are a lot of shortcomings here. The frog player base has specced into skin that offers stamina oh, okay. regeneration in the water since it can directly exchange oxygen with its surroundings when wet. This is a useful ability, the baking, especially okay. given how costly the frog's jump is in terms of stamina. However, this skin offers nothing in terms of defense and is easily pierced by any attack. The frog also lacks any form of damage boosting abilities, having no teeth to boost its bite damage and no horns or spikes to power up its body slam damage, giving it one of the lowest power stats in the game. Rip. It does somewhat make up for this with its strong grab, but seeing as this is useless against players in or above the frog's weight class, this doesn't factor into the frog's general power level since it's so matchup dependent. Their intelligence stat isn't much to boast about either, cool. having one of the simplest brain structures of any vertebrate. Now, for some positives, the frog's hey, stealth in most cases is above average. Cryptic coloration is already a good start, and when combined with the fact that their eyes protrude enough to let them remain almost completely submerged while keeping their vision above water, frogs can be pretty stealthy. This plays nicely with the frog's other decent stat, their mobility. The frog's basic movement speed is quite low, definitely not enough to let them escape an attack or chase down prey. However, the frog build relies almost exclusively on unconventional movement options. Their webbed feet give them fairly high swim speed, which is pretty important for escaping attacks underwater. Some frogs also have cling pads, which allow them to climb almost any surface with ease. They aren't speedy climbers, but the range of surfaces they can climb is impressive. However, obviously the frog's best and most important movement ability is their jump, which is by far the best of any vertebrate and second only to the grasshopper in terms of relative distance. This jump ability constitutes the core gameplay of the frog build, but is this actually a worthwhile ability? As an escape option, I think it's good in the right situation, specifically if there's good cover nearby, however it's not that useful when caught out in the open. While over short distances, it makes the user extremely difficult to catch. Its high stamina cost means that if safety is far away, it's likely you'll burn through all of your stamina before you get there, giving your attacker time to catch up. It also does nothing to help when you're already caught in a grab, Rip. though some frogs have ways of dealing with this too. Where the frog's Poison. jump ability really shines through is as an approach option. It allows the frog to strike targets from a considerable distance, including ones in the air, which is important given that many of the frog's primary targets will have the I like how he like Combined with the jumps it into his mouth. Tether grab tongue, the frog is one of the best builds in the game at landing grabs on builds that, that are looks wild. impossible to hit. Now with that said, leaping at a target requires a huge commitment from the frog player, as the move has a huge amount of end legs, and leaves the user in a potentially vulnerable position. If you whiff this attack, by the time the frog is able to act again, it's likely that your target will either be long gone or counter-attacking. Most of the outside player base considers Amphibians to be one of the weakest, if not the weakest, faction in the entire game. Oh, Their abysmal environmental and disease-resistant stats make them extremely vulnerable to shifts in the meta, 
including the climate patch that's been recently added to the game. With all of this said, despite the harsh, rapidly changing meta of the Anthropocene expansion, there are plenty of frog builds that have still had decent success in this meta. At the bottom of the tier list we have the Tree Frog. The Tree Frog build swaps out the webbed feet for cling pads, meaning oh, they sick. don't have that great of swim speed, that is sick. but gain a near unparalleled climbing ability similar to the Gecko. My main issue with this build is that the Tree Frog playstyle turns the awesome jumping ability of the frog into more of a liability than an advantage. Jumping to escape a predator's attack means that you're risking taking some pretty serious fall damage. This also means that jumping to catch bugs midair is a non-option, negating that was a the big main bug for a little boy. the ability in the first place. Now, some do mitigate this drawback by also specking into the webbed feet ability, which, while normally only useful for water mobility, can also have the niche effect of reducing fall damage. Still, picking up a costly extra ability for its secondary effect isn't exactly the mark of a top tier. In D tier, we have, well, basically all of the pond frogs that stick really close to the standard frog build that I laid out at the start of this video. They have a great jump, webbed feet to boost aquatic movement speed, and solid camouflage. And since I just spent the beginning of the video explaining why I think this isn't enough to be viable, I won't spend any more time discussing them here. They at least get the main benefits out of the abilities that they do have, though, and are undoubtedly more successful than amphibians like salamanders, so I can't place them in bottom tier. In C tier we have the common toad build. The reason toads tend to fare better than your standard pond frog is that they're significantly more sturdy. While they aren't exactly armored, their thicker skin is quite good at reducing incoming damage. Regular frogs are so fragile that even smaller insects can deal lethal damage. Toads, on the other hand, can tank at least a few hits, which is usually enough to let them overcome most arthropod opponents. I did not know fro frogs fucking... ...granting them more resistance to dehydration, giving them versatility and range that the standard pond frog can't match. I did this not know that. Cost, though, they ate uh, scorpions. ...as have a much less powerful jump. <clears throat> However, since they're less vulnerable to attacks, quickly jumping to safety isn't as crucial. Most toads also I like how most people are fine with frogs, even though they look fucking disgusting. Briefing them. However, when it comes to toxic defenses, few builds in the game can boast about poison damage more so than the poison dart frog. The poison dart frog sports the lowest stats of any frog build, even going so far as to drop its stealth rating too, all in the name of spending every possible evolution point on one of the most toxic defensive poisons in the game. Their poison is strong enough to drop any player's HP to zero relatively quickly after biting the frog player. Personally, I've never been a fan of poison strats since it requires you to be attacked and take damage in order to actually activate its effect. On top of this, there are very few abilities that I'd suggest such drastic sacrifices in order to attain. So the fact that the poison dart frog cuts all of its stats in order to min max for poison damage isn't something I consider that good of a strategy. There are diminishing returns on toxin, and having a poison deadly enough to one-shot an entire herd of elephants doesn't help you that much more than a poison that would inflict pain and sickness debuffs onto a mid-sized carnivore. Both achieve the same purpose of discouraging attacks from predator players. Now, if the poison dart frog player base ever specs into fangs and uses this toxin for venom, maybe they'll break into the top tiers. Still, the fact that they can essentially one-shot anyone who attacks them is pretty impressive and earns them an above-average spot on the tier list. In A tier, we have the Bullfrog, which is essentially just your basic frog build, but with greatly improved stats. Your average frog is vulnerable to Jeez. attacks from fish, birds, insects, and snakes. But with their added bulk and power, bullfrogs have solid matchups against all of these, and can even hold their own against powerful predator builds like the house cat. Because of their favorable matchup spread, the bullfrog player base has started to take over pond servers that they don't usually spawn in, Rip. which is the hallmark of a high tier build. Bullfrogs don't have any special defensive abilities or poison, relying solely on their bulk to carry them. But imagine if they did have poison in addition to their great stats. Well, that's essentially the cane toad build. The stats of a bullfrog combined with the thick skin and poison defense of a toad. The I cane toad avoids didn't need to see that. That's gross. The poison dart frog, investing only a moderate amount of evolution points into toxins, grants the cane toad a poison that's dangerous enough to thwart most predatory builds without going overboard and wasting evolution points on an overly lethal elephant slang toxin that it doesn't need. The efficiency of this build allows it to easily take over and dominate the Australian meta. And in fact, the first video that I ever made on this channel was all about how broken they are. However, that was three years ago and the meta is shifting, 
With some intelligence builds, learning the cane toad matchup and using this knowledge to minimize Is it ripping its insides out? By attacking only the toad's weak point and avoiding Ew. poison glands. So I wouldn't be surprised if the cane toad started to drop down from S tier as intelligence builds expose more of the toad's flaws. But as flawed as they are, the frog build has come a long way. The amphibian faction as a whole has very humble beginnings, but the strategies that they pioneered, like swapping their fins for legs and gills for lungs, are still very much relevant to today's meta. If you're interested in learning more about how amphibians and other builds changed the meta, I recommend the documentary Leaps in Evolution, which features some of the highest quality cool. prehistoric animal CGI I've ever seen. 